Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Hey. hey. Welcome back. Ooh. Thank you. What a week it's been. You. Oh, did something happen this past week? A uh, couple things. Couple oh, did things. you? Uh, yeah, you guys both went. I was just here. It was lovely. Great weather. Really pleasant week. Uh, had a good burrito on Wednesday. It was really a really good time. <laughs> um, we both went to hot places, although yeah. yours was not quite as hot as mine. I don't. I think we probably were the furthest away from each other because you were opposite coast, coast yeah. to coast. I was yeah. in yeah. southwest. You were almost northeast. What was the temperature index in, in San Diego? It was 72. This is the coming Oh, my God. It was great. It was 106 in I'm Washington, so D.C. And yeah. humid, I bet. No, that's a, it, it, the, the, what it felt like to your body was hundred between 103 and 106. That's my, not good. My parents live outside D.C. down south a little bit. And yeah. Dad sent me a picture of with the caption, this is what I look like after being outside for six minutes. Yeah. And it was just like, just sweated all it was gross uh, so yeah um it was it was all like that except it was also an amazing week because we were in dc uh celebrating apollo's 50th anniversary how do you want to go through this i want you to go first because i okay. want to hear your stories first. okay uh let's let, 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 there's so many things we did yeah first of all i just want to say that a a, a a delightful love affair was started between tested and the smithsonian institution I, the national th- there's Space nothing Museum. i've ever heard at this table that's made me happier than that i i have to say i have um i have rarely encountered it was just an amazing experience right because this is like a 180 year old institution which means you have the high potential for an entrenched bureaucracy in such an old institution. And that is not at all what we encountered. We encountered an organization that felt almost flat, where everyone we were dealing with had enthusiasm. They understood the mission. They were part of the whole process. They had authority. They had autonomy. They worked well together, di- different departments. I mean, every it, it just was phenomenal. It, it, I So... I spent summers going to my grandparents in D.C., and my grandmother would take me every day. We'd hop on the Metro, and we'd ride up to a different museum yeah. and went to all of the Smithsonian's over multiple times every summer for years and years and years. And it, it, there's such an incredible legacy of knowledge and 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 just like embrace the, the, the way they embrace new ways of sharing information across all of those museums is incredible. It, like it's, it's astounding. It really is. And the way and. Everyone understands the mission is to celebrate more and more human ingenuity so people can see clearly the nuts and bolts of how we did amazing things. It is a palace of stories. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, On the very first day, we got to go out to the conservation lab. I got Mm. to see a moon rover. Is that it for hazy? Uh, Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to spend, I made a new friend in Lisa Young, the conservator who spent the last few years working on the, on Neil Armstrong suit. Um, I got to meet Neil Armstrong's suit before the museum opened. Um, Is that at Hazy? Or? Uh, no, that's okay, at that's uh, okay. okay, got it. Got yeah. it. Uh, they have um, one of the suits from, I think, Apollo 17 at Udvar Hazy. And, and, and for context, I've never been maybe. there, but you've always recommended going there. That is a massive facility. So, right? so like, it's a tough ch- I I have to imagine, like, I'm sure the conservators can talk t- about this at length, but, like, the challenge of what you put at the flagship on the mall, which is a relatively, it's a huge museum, right? But it's small for the stuff that they're showing. Like they have yeah. the Spirit of St. Louis and the Bell yeah. X One and the Voyager. The f- and sh- all three of those things are literally right in the front door. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's like you can see them hanging. Shocking. You just walk in and it's right there. There's and in a, addition, there's an X fifteen. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's the propeller from the NASA wind tunnel from Ames. There's, there's the right, the right flyer. The right flyer is has its own room, which is actually, the right flyer moved me way more than I. Th- thought it would or could uh and uh, at the at the end of one of the days one of the one of the employees said come on upstairs i got to show you this they have the wright brothers original workbench Mm. what oh i didn't know that they have one of three surviving bicycles by them and i want to tell you if you looked at this bicycle you'd be like oh this is a nice like what 40 50 year old bicycle no 120 years old well it's like douglas adams's description of the the, the people that were stuck in the cloud and figured out space flight, but they didn't really like all of that stuff seems like like we clearly did it. Right. But it's incredible that they did it with wood struts and cloth. Oh, so there's that famous shot of the right flyer just having taken off. Mm-hmm. I got a, a tour of that photo by one of the employees, which was amazing. So if you look at that photo, what you can see just behind the right flyer on the ground 
you can see where it was because there are footprints all the way around the silhouette of the wings and the body of the plane. So what you can see (laughs) is that from where it was standing to where in the photo it's off the ground, it's like maybe 10 feet. Uh. (laughs) That's how fast that thing just lifted into the air. And it's all in that famous photo. That's the... Again, this is like I just spent the whole week getting this kind of deep download into all this all this beautiful stuff. I got to go downstairs underneath one of the old LOX rockets and look up at Ooh. this big, like, 25-inch wide shower head for LOX to make the... Yeah, it was it was thrilling. It's, um, and and all of those museums, like the Air and Space Museum, is incredible. Yes, but the American History Museum, the Natural History Museum, the Art Museum, yep. they're all. Yep. We got just, some. Mwah. We got a little bit of a night tour of the Amer- uh, Museum of Natural History. Oh wow! Yeah, which is okay. So you know, the Steinhardt Aquarium has an incredible collection of specimens. Uh, over, I think, a million and a half specimens going back to 1850. That's at the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. Yep, yeah. and uh, that makes it, I think, the third largest connect collection of uh, 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 of fish specimens in the world after the Museum of Natural History is in New York and London for fish alone. Mm-hmm. The Museum of Natural History at the Smithsonian somewhere around 140 million objects yeah oh my god they can't even precisely count them because there's just too damn they're like, and they've, they've been getting them for 150 years at this point and yeah. like it's just yeah you when you we, i got to go on the backstage the back scenes tour once when i was a kid and they just have rooms and rooms and rooms yep. of these they're not quite card catalog drawers but they're like wide they're drawer, just like yeah. wide drawers that are flat and when you open they'll open one they'll be like i have no idea what's going to be in here and then it's just <laughs> a million different butterflies from like polynesia yep. or something or arrowheads right? or yeah. nails from a ship that got dug up yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will say, uh, in getting to meet the Neil Armstrong suit before the museum opened, so the Neil Armstrong suit was revealed on Thursday, I believe, last week, uh, and the public's appetite for seeing it was incredible. There was a line out the door every single day, usually like an hour to two hour wait to, to get in to see it. Uh, I got to see it before the museum opened, so I decided to put on Ryan Nagata's spacesuit to yes. see it. And the best part was is that Ryan is good friends with Lisa Young, and she's every bit as enthusiastic and dedicated as you would hope her to be. And when she saw me wearing Ryan's suit, she was like, oh, come over here, I wanna see it. I haven't seen Ryan's work up close. <laughs> it was like that kind of wonderful oh, so collaborative relationship. Um, I wore Anthony Kovacs's checklist pocket on my leg and Tom Sachs's uh, Mars Yard boots. moon boots. Oh, uh, it, you could tell the sneakerheads in the in the in the Twitter replies. Oh, really? Because they're like, oh, those are moon. Those are those are Mars Yard moon boots. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, I got caught, I wore Tom's Tom's uh, regular Mars Yard shoes the whole week, um, and the two times people noticed it was like young men on the street, like, "Hey, man, nice sneaks." <laughs> One of the things from the build was I heard somebody on on like in the crowd on mic going, "Hey, those are Tom Sachs's Mars Yard shoes." <laughs> um, it's it's it was it seemed like an incredible like just just. How like how do you celebrate one of humanity's greatest achievements? Well, right? and or if not humanity's greatest achievement, and this was this was so uh, the Smithsonian was the one doing it, right? This it, it, in conjunction with NASA, but it was the Smithsonian's party. Uh, they took over the whole mall. They had space themes exhibits across the mall all week. Um, on Friday, I host helped host a NASA TV one hour program, which aired on the Science Channel as well um, about about all aspects of the 50th anniversary. Uh, In which you wore a tux and the A7L, is that right? No, no, not quite. At the end of that day, I went to a gala celebration at the Uh, Smithsonian where we sat in, we had dinner in that front hall. Wow. Right, at, at with the, the Bell at, X1 above our oh, table. wow. Right, so wow. that's in and of itself really wow. cool. I met some people I didn't realize I would meet who I have mutual friends with, so that was also awesome. But then that's me wearing a full mm. tux at the gala. But immediately following the gala, I went out onto the mall because every night this last week, they've had this incredible projection show. 59 Productions, these guys that do projection mapping on large landmarks, really the best in the world at it, out of England. Um, they built this unbelievable performance of projecting the Saturn V rocket and the moon launch onto the, 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 the Washington Monument and using this giant spire as a canvas in the sky. And there were moments in the projection performance. So the first thing you see is the Saturn V rocket projected actual 
perfectly full Mo- moving, scale. Moving, like no, like, like the, it's yes, not moving, it's like a, there's, you see the evaporation coming smoke. off of the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the like you that, see yeah. the liquid oxygen smoke yeah. coming yeah. off, and you it's see, animated, right? It's, animated. That's what and, I was looking for. And there's no uncanny valley with it. Whatever the opposite of the uncanny valley, the closer you get, the higher and sharper it get. Um, but that was just the static. That was the static projection, this beautiful moving projection. And also weirdly felt sometimes like the smoke was responding to the wind around you. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Because you just, your brain well, your would brain kind of make that, that yeah. connection. Yeah. yeah. But then uh, they started showing this performance that they'd written of the rocket taking off, of the full moon landing using the spire as a singular linear canvas. And there were times when you forgot you were staring at a monument with projections and you were just watching the command capsule coming through the atmosphere slowly. So that that was the thing that I didn't realize because I I thought that I knew it would take off. And uh, like the Saturn V is about 600 feet. 363, I think. Yeah. It's two thirds the size of the. It is. Like the, uh, well, plus you, it's like two thirds the size, but then you add forty three feet for the for, for, for the, the, the walker the, for the yeah, yeah, the for traveler. The right, and 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 so I didn't know if it was going to go take off, and then you would not see it. But they, it, it's like as if a camera was on it and tracking it, and you would see it's, it slowly yeah. Yeah, go you up. You saw it tilt over. You saw the cone of flame. It seemed amazing. I'm so sad I didn't get to see it. You realize watching it that they had. You, there are a lot of limitations to projecting on a single strip, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's they a big, solve it's not a only big this, building. What's that? It's 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 wide. It's wide, but it's really it's wide, but it's also way, way taller than it is wide. Yeah, exactly. Vertical video, folks. Yeah. So they oh, um, no. they did a tremendous job at building a really exciting narrative about the whole history of the Apollo space program using countdown clocks and archival footage mm. and all the supporting material on side projections that were on, plus an incredible sound system. So at the end of the gala on Friday night, <clears throat> there were performances at 930, 1030, 1130, uh, and I think 1230, yes, mm. uh, as well. So we saw the 1030, 1130, 1230. So I had to leave the gala in my full tux, meet up with the tested crew who had my space suit, and I didn't have anything interim. All I had was a tux or the A7L. <laughs> and I'm all, you know, so I'm sitting in the, in, the, in, the, in the bleachers watching the performance in my tux, and everyone's like, and it, you know, sometimes if you don't move too, if you don't start sweating, yeah, you can kind of maintain. Yeah. So I'm in the tux. I'm moving sort of slowly, and after about half an hour, I, I saw G- Michael Giacchino, and he was like, "Aren't you sweating balls in that thing?" And I'm like, "Actually, no." And I'm kind of like getting off on looking this good in this heat, <laughs> <laughs> just wearing the full tux. Uh, one of the uh, 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 Nick, one of the organizers of this entire event, went and found me a Apollo 50th T-shirt, oh. so I was able to wear that under the space suit, and we okay. got some pictures of me. Right up next yeah. to the rocket, down there on the mall. Oh, that's that was cool. just, I mean, we were up until like one thirty in the morning, 2 wow. in the morning. How long did the show, the show ran for a couple hours, right? Uh, no, the show, so the show, the actual projection show was like, I want to say like 10 minutes. Oh, really? It was, it was relatively short. Oh. And they repeat it. Yeah. Okay. Not a dry eye in the house every single time. Oh, I can't I mean, so imagine. like I'm watching it and I look over just as it finishes and it's Bobak. And I'm like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? And we had been corresponding about whether or not we were going to uh, connect while we were in D.C. And there he is like sitting right next to me and I'm trying to talk to him. And I realize, oh, he's been crying because it's so moving. Yeah. Uh, oh, it yeah. was like that was every single one of the performances kind of hit you in the gut like Look, that. When when last night, I've been following this Apollo 50th account which on Twitter, which has been brilliant. Hasn't it? it like they've, they've So basically what they've been doing is, is posting mostly just transcripts of the communication back and forth between Capcom and uh, the command module and the LEM yeah. and, and over the entire run of, like in the weeks leading up it was about training. Once the launch happened, it started being transcripts. And last night they they got to the point where they uh, you know shot the Lem back into the moon, right? And Neil Armstrong said that that was a good one, huh? And <laughs> I was just like, oh sh- shit, I'm gonna cry. Oh yeah, for a tweet. Well, at the gala that I went to on Friday night, there was a wonderful onstage interview with uh, with Michael Col- with Mike Collins and uh, Buzz Aldrin, mm-hmm. uh, and. The, my takeaway from this week is that Mike Collins is a comedy genius. 
He is one of the f- driest, funniest mofos I have ever seen. He was hilarious. And of course, he got the question, well, at that point, you were the loneliest man in human history. And he's like, everyone keeps talking about loneliest man on the loneliest journey on the dark side of the moon. He's like, I was in constant communication with NASA and the CM the entire time, except for those brief periods of time I was on the back side of the moon, which was delightful. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that, so that's the thing. It's like, he was talking all the time. Mm-hmm. They were kind of like when those guys were on the left. I didn't realize this, but they didn't know where they landed. Like NASA, NASA had to figure out where exactly oh they had God. landed. Yeah, and that involved them telling him, "Hey, look in this sector," and then he would look out the window and see if he could see them when he was on a pass. Well, be like, "Nope, not that time. I can only look at one of these at a time, guys. You got to give me more specific wow. instructions." Well, and then so Buzz was giving this wonderful description of exactly why they landed the way that they did. He goes, look, we could see that the landing site we'd spec was at the bottom of a of a crater, and mm-hmm. that's not good. He said, so you have three options. You can pull up short. The problem with that is it involves uh, coming to a pitch to use your rockets to slow yourself yeah. down, and at that point, you can't see the moon yeah. because you... Because the windows face the, up the, the attitude right. is, yeah. yep, yep. So that one's not great, no. especially when you don't have a lot of fuel. The other one is you could go to the side and land to the side of the crater, but that has the same exact problem of you lose your, your bearings. Yeah. So the third one, which uses the most fuel but is the one that has the most positive feedback, is just go all the way across. Uh, and, you know, the the the... This, this, it's just you realize what engine. I don't know. I mean, I know that Buzz and Mike have answered these questions every day for 50 years, yeah. and yet their ability to continue to make the story thrilling is remarkable. The, it's a real gift uh, to be able to do that and keep it fresh and really like believe in that mission of trans- transmitting what a remarkable thing that it was. Um, but so, at the same time, super mundane, right? right? Like they land, they get up, they're walking on the world, a new world for the first time. And Neil and Buzz have a conversation about like how much the lander sunk into the dust because they didn't understand. Like we didn't know about the geology of the right, place. Right. They, they were like, told it was going to sink amazing. four feet in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody warned them. It's uh, incredible. Yeah. That was awesome. Uh, you you were busy on Friday. I got to watch a little bit of the live stream. Was it Friday? Egress. It was, it was, uh, was Thursday. Was it Friday or Thursday? Thursday. That was oh, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. We did Project Egress. We assembled with uh, a good team of t- some tested favorites. Kate mm-hmm. Sabaker, Sophie Wong, uh, Mel, uh, Mel Ho, uh, 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 Jen Schachter, mm-hmm. uh, and Andrew Barth. All of us on stage assembling the 45 pieces of the command module hatch. And it was exactly the Calico Exquisite Corpse construction that we were hoping it would be. It was fascinating. Like I was sitting and watching, oh, good, good, good. watching you it the live. first like couple hours yeah. in in a Discord with some other people who were tested fans, and we were just talking about it. And it was so fun to watch the live <sighs> problem solving. It's a, it's a thing I've seen yeah. a million times doing one day builds here right, right. in the shop, but they often don't come through on the video. Well, hats off to the Smithsonian's team because the place they put you in was a stage where people can basically stand all around you yep. mm-hmm. and they were filming it because they were proje- they were broadcasting yep. locally so it's the beyond earth gallery and they have like f- they have half a dozen remote cameras in there mm-hmm. that they can change the oh, angles nice. and move them around yeah. so actually at the end we, here's here's what it was like working with the smithsonian at the end of it we go to them and we're like so you guys got recorded a bunch of footage up there and they said yeah and they said could we get maybe could we use that and he's like have you got a hard drive and we hand him a hard drive and 10 minutes later he wow. hands us all the cameras coverage of the footage. I mean, th- th- whoever was doing the production on that did a really good job of <clears throat> keeping, like, it's it's hard to, to keep the thing that's interesting happening at mm-hmm. any given moment in mm-hmm. there, and they did a lovely job with it. Here's the other thing about that construction, um, and I, I had some experience doing that with Jen for Rosie the Riveter, and also a couple of years ago at the Exploratorium, the yep. three days I spent yeah. building the Strand based. There is an aspect to building live in front of people that is a completely different sort of performance theater than any other media I can imagine because I'm able to sort of shut out that the crowd is there and just concentrate on the thing that's in front of me and they're able to actually watch my process and our process happen for real and the stakes are real I was the only one who was confident that we were going to get done by the end of the day everyone else was kind of pooping bricks about it (laughs) open these boxes faster right and you know there was there was a moment at which I turned to Jen quietly and I was like 
we're in the hump stretch. She's like, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once that thing went, everything else is going to be easy. Uh, just to kind of like give her a little bit of uh, succor from the, all the stress. Because Jen Schachter has really been holding all of this project in her head up you, until now. You had now. six hours to do it? Seven hours? Yeah, seven hours. Seven yeah. and a half, ultimately, by the yeah. end of the day. Um, it, it was it was intense. Like it, there, there was a lot of tension there. It was fun. It was it was fun watching people watch Joey do his thing, right? Yeah, because like, because like, around. well, and, and you and Joey working together too at this point is really fascinating. Because like, you know when you should do an aside to the camera and show something, so Joey's gonna have the bit to connect the thing, and Joey yeah. knows he needs the bit and what pieces to get to make that work. Yeah, um, and it was it was really fun watching it. It's a delightful. You know, it, so it's funny that now you say that it strikes me that maybe we could do a one day build of actually making a video and talking about how we, I mean, you know, one of the things that I think is really unique about our tested build videos is the amount of silence in them. And that's mm -hmm. something that Joey and I figured out together a long in time. collaboration yeah. of like, mm, let's do this. And <clears throat> once it happened, it started opening up this whole other kind of way of cutting. And it'd be really delightful to show that process yep. because I have the same sort of, I have the same simpatico relationship with Scott Sorensen, who's my Mythbusters main cameraman. Mm -hmm. um, and that when that relationship is good, you know, people ask me about advice for being on television, like, you know, I've acted as consigliere to a lot of new television talent. And one of the key things I say is like, it's really important to have a cameraman you like, even you're, maybe you're, more important than having a director you like, although both are real, really important. And if it's the same person, then great. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, ha I've had bad cameramen who didn't care about, and by bad, I only mean they didn't care about what I was doing. Yeah. And that's not, they don't have to, that's not the job requirement, but man, it makes the product so much better when it's there. Well, I mean, and having somebody who shoots and edits makes a big difference or even, if they're, even if they're not going to be the editor no nope. but having Completely. them think about how the edit's going to go together as they're shooting yes is all that anyway we, we're talking about video into space we um, yeah, so get, the, 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 the one that build on the floor couldn't have gone better microsoft uh, microsoft's prototype design group uh provided the base which was just so beautifully <laughs> built and so simple and the main core of the door which was gorgeous although i sp I, I split it on a couple of seams hammering the outside of the window into it <laughs> Audible gasps in the crowd on that one. By the way, <laughs> that that was when I I tuned in just in time for that. I was like, oh wow, this is so, gonna. So that's how this is gonna go. This was the only time I was looking at the tools, and I I was a little bit performative about it because every time I stopped doing what I was doing and I went and looked at the tools, I could tell there was like a pause in the room and people were like, what's he going to grab next? Yeah. <laughs> and so the, I'm holding this window up and I've been grinding it and it's Savage not quite working. It's not quite working, but I got it sort of in, so it's wedged in, but it's not good. And I'm looking down, 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 and I pick up the mallet and I hear like the whole crowd oh, the going, ha, 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 here we go. <laughs> so did you crack the, did, I couldn't tell if you cracked the window or cracked the door. I cracked the door. Okay. Um, which is you needed that space. <laughs> I, I should have I, I should have shaved another fifty thou off the outside oh, of the boy. of the CNC MDF window frame, but that that is what it is. Well, the end result was absolutely lovely. I and I it's know, out on the floor of the Smithsonian now. Oh, it's is out it, there is in one of the main the, yeah, one the, in, in the main gallery. That's so cool. Yeah, right, and Jen designed these beautiful placards on the side that tell the whole story, give credit to all the collaborators. Uh, and it starts from the front one and then it moves clockwise around. So it's phenomenal. It's uh, like the plaque left on the moon. Yeah. Jim, um, Jimmy DeResta's hinges were... Weren't they magnificent? Mwah. I know. Just uh, lovely. But everybody, everybody uh, yeah, yeah. turned... I mean, Evan and Caitlin turned out these like mood strut covered in mood paint so when you held on to it, it the heat changed mm, the color mm -hmm. did, did did kate do the galaxy paint on her piece uh, kate did the galaxy paint on her piece sophie wong did hers like a piece of fine jewelry with wire wraps uh mel painted hers uh painted theirs in dazzle paint yeah, sean was, was more blueprint so sean was blueprint which is beautiful exposed edges yeah. a couple of the parts the uh, vent and the gearbox were built um matter hackers were one of the builders and it built as if they could go right into the real door out of hand machined aluminum, sandblasted or tumbled. Who did the crank? Gorgeous parts. That is not on the top of my oh, head. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I can't remember all the makers off the top of my head. We'll put it in the, 45 in the link people below. out of my head. I'm so disappointed <laughs> in you. And now you want to build another one. I, I want to build some more. Oh yeah. yeah! I first of all, I definitely you you need this a hatch. whole project exists because I wanted my own hatch. <laughs> As I'm, many of these projects, it, it, right? Yeah. It's all based on it's all based on Obsession. desire. So we, um, I mean, the tested stage show this fall, um, in October. <laughs> you can do it on the Castro <laughs> Theater. And, exactly. Yeah, tickets available now. Um, they're not really available. Sorry. 
Uh, what? Okay, what else happened? This. Oh, right. So then on Saturday night, I hosted the the actual 50th anniversary celebration coinciding with Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon 50 years to the minute. Wow. And to be clear, we were 90 seconds behind. <laughs> In our timing, um, the that, of that at the moment Michael Giacchino played the second of the two fanfares he'd written for NASA. The new one is called Advent, and it's so beautiful that at the moment in the video that supports it, Neil Steps on the Moon is 50 years to the minute from the mm. moment he stepped on the moon. So and it was... It was such a thrilling performance to be a part of Herbie Hancock, Pharrell, Natasha Bettenridge, uh, Meredith Vieira, LeVar Burton. Uh, LeVar Burton. I mean, LeVar is such a a being of pure light I, that guy he and i it's like we, it's hard for us to get stuff done when we're together because we're just like oh that's so good i love that guy that sounds um, like a star trek spoiler <laughs> <laughs> um it, he, it, the performance itself was amazing michael giacchino obviously in, in addition to being an amazing composer is like the stupidly nicest guy in the world uh and if, he was there with his whole family extended family and you know i know them all really well so that was also delightful That's it was like awesome. being wrapped in a big cocoon of family and then um the crowd was phenomenal i i, I don't mind saying that i killed as the host it, <laughs> it went great uh it was funny it was moving it was it was poignant um neil armstrong's uh, uh, uh son and granddaughter sang this magnificent song called flight of flight of fancy that mm. Is genuinely beautiful, and they sang it with an orchestra backing them. Pharrell sang "Freedom" with a full orchestra. Wow! Yeah, it, it was a stunning and stupendous night. Uh, we ended it on the roof of the Watergate Hotel. I stayed at the Watergate, <laughs> and by the way, the pens at the Watergate have inscribed on them, "I stole this from the Watergate Hotel." Nice. <laughs> That's a good sense of humor. I drove by there yeah, years and years without having any idea. The the but it's a lovely hotel. It was a lovely hotel, except for one small thing that happened. What happened? Adam? Well, well, what the, really grinds your gears? Uh, well, I, at the end of a full day of filming on Friday, out on the mall, outdoors, so I was hot and in need of some succor because I was going to have to put a tux on two hours later. Yeah. I went back to my hotel and their air conditioning had gone out. Oh, oh no. Oh, so boy. my room was 80 degrees. I Look, it, that Probably was- felt nice after being outside all day. <laughs> it, it, I, here's my tip. If you really want to get cool, don't be angry. That turned yeah. out to be the linchpin, right? I'm sitting yeah. there like, it's, it's colder. And then I thought, I, I, I should really meditate a little bit and get rid of some of this yeah. anger. And then cooled right down, took a nap. When I woke up, it had already lowered by three degrees. Obviously, they were scrambling to yeah. fix it. Yeah. Um, and and that was my only issue. I didn't tweet their name when I was complaining about the, the heat in the room because I don't want to trash the business itself. Yeah, no. Everyone I dealt with there was phenomenally awesome it was a great hotel well it's yeah it's one of those situations where you yelling at people isn't going to make anything any better no, it's just going to no, make everything worse problem is the yeah. whole thing goes out yeah. um uh funnily enough there was a uh, uh i ran into a neighbor of mine in the hotel at 1 30 in the morning <laughs> yeah my name my neighbor anthony who lives like a block from here um is really was funny. in a dance show right next door to our theater on the night that we were doing it so i'm i'm literally i'm like I'm back at my room. It's 1.30 in the morning on Friday night, and I'm, I've am i pushed the number on. I'm sitting there holding everything, my space suit, everything. I'm really tired, and I hear somebody go, hold on, i got to go talk to this guy. <laughs> and I think, okay, here comes a fan interaction. I'm really, really tired, and I turn, and it's my neighbor, Anthony. He's just messing with me. Oh, that's really <laughs> funny. Um, I, I mean... Anything else? Uh, I feel like I feel like there's a <laughs> an infinite number of things. Um, I, these were these are all the the big highlights yeah. of the week. Tested's going to have a, t a bunch of content on a bunch of different levels of the conservation. Some new stuff we saw. We talked to the people who did the projections. We talked to the people who did the projections, and that's going to. I'd love to do a deeper dive with them in a future project at some point because what they do is incredible. Um, the problems they solve, basically they never do the same thing twice, of course, like of course. even yeah. remotely. Yeah. Yeah. So how to build a team that does that is something I'm really fascinated by. Joey's probably working <laughs> on a one day build at some point for Project Egress. <laughs> yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, it just felt like I spent an entire week inside the enthusiasm of human ingenuity. So good. And with a whole bunch of people also dedicated to that. Uh, and it was what a sheer delight. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Truly. Is, yeah. Um, Norm, 
How was Comic Con? <laughs> yeah, time for this. <laughs> hey, oh my gosh! Hey, I'll give you the the give cliff, notes, the cliff notes. notes. We were there for two days, repping for Tested. That's your shortest Comic Con ever, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Yeah, in fifteen years. Um, said so it was it was you know, saying hi to friends. Right. Yeah, you it got was, to see you got to see the folks from Weta. Got to see Richard and Greg Broadmore. Nice. Uh, had great conversations with them. They brought their team. It's wonderful because they bring different folks out every year. Right. From different departments. And oh. so Luke, who was the uh, the builder Luke and Hunger. the actor inside I Am Mother, yep. uh, he was there. Got to catch up with him. Uh, some of our friends from the model shop, Leonard, was also oh, his first time in oh, the states. Great. So it's always great to see like their first time. And of course, they get to be surrounded by people who love their work. Yeah, uh, that's cool. They had some uh, stuff from. You know, anniversary of Planet of the Apes. It was the 50th anniversary of Comic Con. Did you realize that? No. It was the Comic Con, wow. 50th Comic Con, 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. What lighting. was the first? The first Comic Con was probably like 20 guys in the basement of the Sheraton. It was, or it was right? a much smaller scale. Yeah. scale. Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but, but hung out with Kishore there. Who was by there the on second a year, panels. they were like, it was so much better last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, every year. <laughs> Crowds yeah. are terrible this year. Oh, Kishore did like three cosplays, did he, he not? Well, fewer than expected. He brought he had the suitcase full of them, but then we were busy working, and I think he did for his, the last day when he did the panels um, with uh, with Kyle with Kyle Hill from Nerds. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Kyle. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and then you know, hang out with Tom Spina. Yep. And those folks a bit. Uh, Magic Wheelchair was there. Got to say hi to oh, them. Cool. Fabulous. Um, the prop store folks, obviously, every year, really great stuff for their fall auction. Uh, and then again, it was just saying hi to a lot of a lot of people we only get to see maybe once a year because that's when they head over to San Diego. Fabulous. Yeah. A lot um, of videos I, out this week. I have a YouTube channel I just wanted to call out because I was talking about it beforehand. Um, Lockpicking Lawyer. Okay. There's a YouTube channel called Lockpicking Lawyer. You never see his face. He has the same cadence in every video, of which there's like hundreds and hundreds. Wow. And each video is him looking at a lock uh, and ascertaining how easy or hard it is to break into. And the spoiler, they're almost all super easy. Mm -hmm. Um, there are weaknesses to everything, but he is very, um, uh, uh, robust about talking about why certain weaknesses are not as important as other weaknesses, et cetera. Uh, and it's a delightful, like I, there's hundreds of videos. They're all very self-similar and they're very comforting to me. I watch them a lot. Um, and we've been going back and forth on Twitter. He, uh, DMing on Twitter. He's coming to town soon. I'm hoping to have him over here on Tested, maybe to teach me a thing or two uh, to fill out my lockpicking yeah. skills, cool. which Absolutely. are limited. Yeah. Lockpicking lawyer. Yes. A fun good, YouTube channel. a good skill to have. Yeah. yeah. No, not bad. It's not a bad skill to have in a pinch. I have, yeah. uh, I have rescued several situations by being able to pick locks. It turns out, yeah, if you have that credit card lockpick set in your, in your, in your wallet, you can save somebody three hundred bucks, no problem. Yeah, if you ever like meet, that. if you ever run into Kevin Mitnick, ask him for one of his one of his business oh, cards. His, his, his cards have picks. His, as far as I know, he was the first one to have the etched stainless oh. steel business card that was a set of lock picks. I, I had what? to pay for mine from the Tool guys years ago at Maker Fair. Oh yes, and Ooh, that's I have that cool. set too. Yeah. Extra O's. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, now that you're back for a couple weeks without a ton of travel, I highly recommend go watching some movies. So we can talk about some of these movies. Yes, Ooh. they're out. I saw yesterday. I will give my thumbs up recommendation. Really excellent, so excellent. Please, okay. both of you go watch yesterday. And there's a movie that uh, it's I think a limited release, but it's getting rave reviews. It's Aquafina's new movie, uh, The Farewell. I think it's okay. playing Kabuki. Oh. It's based on the New York New Yorker story about this this family and how they don't tell the grandmother, the matriarch of the family, that. She's gonna die. I heard about this. Yes. I heard about this. Hundred right. percent. They have a family. They have a fake wedding to bring everyone. Close. They bring everyone together as a way to say farewell without um, letting without, her in on. Oh, that's and beautiful. Wow. I can't wait to see that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I watched uh, Endgame again on my hotel television yeah. and wept like a baby at the end. <laughs> I, I've only, it's only seen it one time. I think I should probably go back again before it's while well, it's still in theaters. This was my third it. time. Yeah. Uh, that was that was delightful. Um, I finally saw Spider Man last week. I have not yet. That seen movie's. It. It's, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Awesome. I, I, I cannot feelings. wait. I cannot wait. Um, oh, also, um, uh, four of my spacesuits for the San Francisco listeners. Four of my spacesuits are on display at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art as part of Joseph Becker's, uh, the curator there, a wonderful art installa uh, installation called Far Out about space habitats and the, the future thinking, the ways in which we posited how to live in space. It's a beautiful exhibit. Uh, and they, they custom dressed uh, my uh, brand new EVA, which we haven't even done a tested mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. on, my 2001, my Mercury and... 
What's the fourth aces. one? Aces. Aces, right. The orange aces suit. Thank oh, you. Yes. Uh, Tom Sex has uh, spacesuits there as well in a wonderful display. Oh, his display is beautiful because it's four sided. So he's yeah. got the suit, but the in all the interior parts are displayed with On it. On the other sides? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And one of my favorite parts, I mean, the suits are great. Uh, there's also, I think we mentioned last time, Steve Neal, the model maker, he made a uh, 2001. The, uh, the 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 space station. He did a thirty. What? Really? He did a thirty-six inch model of the space station, in I think six weeks. Yeah. And it's mind blowing. And I'll tell you a little bit of behind the scenes action is that, of course, because a lot of the the hard parts, the actual shells are self similar. He made a section and cast it only to have his resin fail. So he then scratch built all that he needed out of styrene. So he built the entire thing effectively twice in six weeks. Wow. I don't know many other people that could have done it. Um, it did tax him as is, you know, we were corresponding during the whole thing, but the model itself is gorgeous. It's lit. You can actually see the, 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 the Pan Am jet coming into the lit, you know, the poster, you get to see it there. I mean, one of my favorite things, we got a little preview of it. Uh, the things that really from my childhood, from the NASA Ames collection were these commissions of what would be like for humans to live on like ring worlds mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. space stations. Yeah. And the, the paintings, the, those, yeah, exactly, the, the, those paintings yeah. of the cross sections of what would farms like be if they were on these rings yeah. around planets. Yeah. Those, these are massive. The originals are there and getting up close to see that that painted detail is just, at MoMA? Really, at the moment. At the oh, moment. Wow, I gotta um, go. And they Real have special. an original Gemini suit from NASA Ames. And I'm going to go back and take some more pictures because I may I may end up remachining some of the stuff on my Gemini suit. So, so this is a non sequitur. Did you see the Close Encounters model at Udvar Hazy? It's in the, uh, it used to be in the oh, Discovery yes, the thing. Yeah, the oh, mothership. yeah. Okay. I've actually pointed out many, many details to the locals about them, the, yeah. about that ship that they might not have noticed. I, that one, it, I was, yeah, it's, it's, if you go, it's off on the side. It's as it was beautiful a model as, as has ever been built by, for a science fiction film. Yeah. It's totally incredible. Um, yeah, I think. That's a good well, place. Yeah. To, there's a reasonable so much. place to start. We I know. could go it, on for this hours was and hours. a crazy hours. week. It was yeah. really amazing. Can, and I'm, Oh. Consider this podcast a tease for all the content. <laughs> Everything we talk about, well, there will be some video about it. A lot of Comic Con stuff is going out this week, 16 videos, and then the DC trip stuff will go out in the weeks following. Oh, I did learn one amazing thing. Oh, so I'm backstage when Neil Armstrong's son comes back to look at my spacesuit, and we're standing there talking about it. And he, Wait, do you have it on? No, I was. Oh, okay. I had it hanging in the dressing okay. room, and he said something about. I said, "Do you know?" what's in this chest in this pocket which is on the left thigh right i have the checklist pocket that anthony kovacs built because i own a apollo era real one yeah and had it replicated but i've never been able to discern what was in this left, so left thigh left pocket. front thigh it is the extra lunar sample return bag wow so depending on how things went the and he, he told me directly he was like Neil's job was to get out there and immediately put a sample in the bag and put it in that pocket. So in case they had to scrub and get something. the hell out, he had something. So his very first task was get something in there, get it in the pocket. So I've got a beautiful lunar sample return bag that Anthony made for me. That's going in my space. That's pocket. so cool. Yes. And it came from the about as close from the horse's yeah. mouth as wow. it can come. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Again, like I said, the whole week was just bathed in warm enthusiasm for the brilliance of human collaboration and ingenuity. What what could be better? Did you watch any Apollo movies as you were traveling? I, I watched Apollo 11 again in my hotel room yeah. and again wept like a baby. And the filmmaker was in the bar at the end of Saturday night. The first Man or Apollo 11? No, Apollo, Apollo 11. 11. Apollo 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got so with them. Yeah, we, awesome. spent, yeah. we spent about yeah. half an hour talking to each other. And I met the guy at the archives who found, found all that original uh, the 65 footage. 65 mil. Wow. That's, and we could do a whole podcast of just about how weirdly amazing that film is because I haven't been party to any of these conversations. Yeah, that he was sitting had in on, your seat. Oh my <laughs> God. That podcast all about those it. weird <laughs> compositions. And I, you, I described it to someone else. I haven't watched it a second time. I was like, you know what this feels like? This feels like, what if you gave Werner Herzog <laughs> the job to make this documentary? Because of all these unbroken, beautiful cuts, yeah, yeah. right? Just the long... You, you, those long cuts are something that more documentaries should have because you end up your consciousness ends up changing while you're watching this stuff for so long. I mean, you think about what our field of vision is as humans, and those long cuts are the the long sweeping 
shots are how you get as close to that as you can yeah. on film. Even with like even IMAX doesn't come close to standing, you know, in Yosemite Valley looking at El Cap or or whatever. And when you see that at the end of the film when he does that 360 pano of the moon's surface, it yeah. just feels so immediate and so Every choice made about that documentary was amazing to me. Not using any narration, the long cuts, the incredible weirdness and wonderfulness of the footage, the ways in which they built narrative elements like the Neil song. thinking about his kids. And the song at the end. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. really, really moving. So yeah, I watched that oh. just before going out to do a bunch of coverage Seems about like a perfect it. Perfect way to do of it. Of course, exactly. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Woo! Oh. That was a <laughs> back to <laughs> that Earth. Felt like it was about five minutes. All right. Back to Earth. Back to Earth. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.